Hey, what's going on? This might be quick because it's hot in this motherfucking car right now. So, <clears throat> let me talk about, I don't even know what I'm going to title this, but let's just call it The Great White Hope or The Continuing Replacement of Us. I want you to think about this. I've been noticing what's been happening. Africans and Caribbeans, they've been trying to use them to speak on our behalf and be us and impersonate us for the longest time. With the, the many actors during the black exploitation era and even before, namely with the Sidney Portier. Notice how he had no controversies once he was uh, on his way out. You know, he was the perfect uh, black guy with the smooth accent and all that kind of stuff. And I still don't know how he was chosen to be that black breakthrough black guy. I don't know if it's because of his small facial features plus the dark skin and the way he spoke. Because Godfrey Cambridge, another Caribbean, you know, he had a different type of uh, 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 speaking. <laughs> And his facial feature, you look like a white guy, really. White guy in blackface. That's why he was uh, able to play in the, in the Watermelon Man. <laughs> um, but you got, you got a lot of the black people. See, when you talk about taking jobs, that's who's been doing it. Not any African like Tariq and them. Like talking about, I was on that red TV show. You know, some of the Negroes. That's why I get tired of uh, arguing with hood Negroes because they can't have a conversation. It's either they thinking what they're thinking. And if you tell them something else, they don't want to hear it because they don't know about it. Like this guy E that was on there. The idiot. I'm, I'm going to call him an idiot, but I was trying not to go off on my man's show because that was my first time on there. So I didn't want to. Go off on the guy. But. We were talking about rappers. The Jamaican rappers. And the Caribbean rappers. And how he said that he didn't know that Biggie Smalls was Jamaican. He didn't know that Buster Rhymes was Jamaican just by looking at him. He didn't know that KRS-One. Some people say he's not Jamaican. But I would argue that he probably is. They say he's some other type of Caribbean. But his music suggests Jamaican. <laughs> so do his eyes. But whatever the case is, he's a Caribbean. And he was talking about my nose looks like KRS ones because I got a big nose. I was like, damn, you know, damn well your nose doesn't look like KRS ones nose. Your nose might be big, but it ain't like KRS ones. So he's like, people. Wouldn't be able to tell the difference between us. I said, okay, man. I don't know anybody else who would say or want to argue that they look like KRS-One. But if that's <laughs> what he wants to argue, then so be it. Uh, you know, let him have it. So, and he's like, I didn't know Buster Rhymes was Jamaican. I said, you didn't know, but we knew. He's like, you can't tell the difference. I say. You can't tell the difference. Then once I found out he was from Compton, then I said, oh, it all makes sense now why you don't know. Because <laughs> there aren't that, I take it there aren't too many uh, Jamaicans and other Caribbeans in the L.A. area. Because they usually come to the Florida, New York, anywhere along the East Coast, because that's where the Caribbean is at. So it's easy for them to get back and forth. They, they, I was looking at some show, they said they got 100,000 Haitians in Massachusetts. And then around the Boston area in particular. So they set up shop. And then uh, they're there. People know the difference. This, that's the thing about Negroes, man. If they don't know anything, then all of a sudden, you're wrong. I don't know. You're wrong. You're a hood Negro. You're not a PhD. And even PhDs can't get with this. <laughs> As I will demonstrate to you once I put up the uh, other videos. Like I said, if Rumble had a quicker 
process, uh, you know, they'd be up there quicker. But I'm, I'm withstanding heat as this heat builds up in here, too. But I don't want to turn the air conditioner on because you know how that goes. <clears throat> but, um, you know, Negroes just got to learn to have a conversation and learn new things. Like when I talk to you guys. I have a conversation. I learn some new shit. I don't say, oh, I didn't know that shit. So fuck you. What kind of shit is that? That's why black people can't even do anything with organized crime. Because everybody's trying to be an independent boss. They know it all. And I can guarantee you in any given area. In any major city. There's enough money to be made. By anybody interested in doing it. But people think that they have to do it mob style. I got to dominate the whole scene. It's better to, if you want to, if you don't want to be in one group, it's better to have a, a cooperative effort and get along. And then the only thing you got to worry about are fiends trying to uh, stick you up in the police. That's it. But Negroes can't do that after all these years. Negroes don't know how to even do crime. But yet they want to always act like they're intellectuals and tell us what we're all about. Now, there was one guy from Brooklyn, of all places, trying to tell, say, oh, no, you can't tell. I said, man, you've got to be sick. And you from Brooklyn? I went to Brooklyn one time. And I, I went to a McDonald's in a, a, a little plaza. I think it was off Flatbush. And uh, I forgot the other street, the other popular uh, street. Uh, went in there to use the bathroom. First, I was gonna order something. Then I said, "You know what? I'm breaking my rule." <laughs> Number one, it was crowded, but I really had to go to the bathroom. That was the main thing. And uh, the rule was, don't buy from attached buildings. Don't buy food from attached buildings in New York. Just that—that's my rule. It has to be a standalone building. That's my rule. <laughs> right, everybody else, they can buy what the fuck they want. They, they can do it how they want to do it, but that's my rule. So, I go into the McDonald's. I see a whole bunch of clear-cut Caribbeans. Red eyes, looking foreign, like a motherfucker. I mean, it's pretty clear. Again, I was dating a lady who... Knew how to recognize the various appearance of Haitians. Out in the Nyack Spring Valley area. And I said, damn, she she does know them all. And then, you know, I knew some of the looks, but she was showing me some of the other looks. And then that's when I realized, you know, they got a whole bunch of uh, different looks. And a lot of them, you know, looking like Dominicans, as you might expect so I was like damn yeah, that's crazy you uh, pull back the uh, sunroof uh, I guess you call that the visor part even if it's closed it, you know brings in it makes it a little bit cooler <laughs> guess it's that glass but anyway um so there are various looks. And again, these Cubans, even though they're mixed race, because I'm in New Jersey a lot, North Bergen, Sea Caucus, all these areas where these Cubans are at. You can clearly, well, I can clearly, I just say I can clearly see the differences. And they kind of fall somewhere in between Dominicans. And um, Puerto Ricans. Like when I was in that Sea Caucus uh, Walmart. There's a lot of Cubans work there. Female Cubans with big behind still, I might add. A whole bunch of different looks. Even a white style one. Who you might say, damn, that's white at first. And so you look at the name. And then you hear that accent. She got a big jumbo ass too. But she thought. You know, that was something I wanted. So I don't even care about that white style kind. 
I prefer a black style kind or in between. But um, anyway, I saw one Cuban lady. She was staring at this Mexican lady. At first, I was like, damn, is she gay? Or maybe she was like, damn, it's Mexican. I don't understand. This, this, is, this is wild. Maybe they like getting offended because these Mexicans are all over here. So, they got their look. A lot of them look more Negroid, even if they're light. And they might have frizzy hair, very curly hair, the kinky hair. And some of them might have some blonde color in it. I don't know if it's natural or not. Probably not. So they got various appearances. You know? There's no one appearance because people are mixed. Even Jamaicans are mixed. Haitians are mixed. Like that guy, uh, damn, I forgot my man's name. I hate when the face sticks into your head but and then the name leaves you. The guy that played in that MC Hammer movie. <clears throat> that guy's a Haitian. But look at his facial features. You know? Everything varies, you know? There's no one look. That's why you can't really look at listen to these guys from parts of the country that aren't familiar with these people. All they're doing is listening to our our stories and, 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 and trying to act like they know the deal. You have to have grown up with these people. Then you will know the deal. Like even there were some Haitians I knew were not black Americans because of their look. Because they were darker and their facial features were looking different. They were clearly looking foreign. Even if they try to sound like us. Like one guy I knew, his name was Henri. Dark. Chip tooth. And I kept saying to myself, what the fuck kind of name is Henri? Only later in later years that I realized, okay, that was a Haitian. But I knew he wasn't a black American. Now, a lot of these Jamaicans, they got their distinctive looks. Now, if that guy would have shut up on the uh, on, on, on the live, I would have explained the look. And but matter of fact, I was explaining some of it in the chat room because I kept telling people, why don't you look up the Cardinal official? That's one of the primary Jamaican looks that and that's what Buster Rhymes has, you know, the big jaw, wide mouth, big lips. And some people want to call it flat noses and Jamaicans have that. Odd skin coloring, which is kind of like yellowish brown. Matter of fact, I just went to the store. I saw what I'm sure was a, one of those South African uh, Khoisan females. She was looking good. She had a big butt, too. She said, if I got, I got to target some females, if I find some more of those types, I think that might be the type I might have to get with. When they're not looking tribal, they, they're looking pretty good. <laughs> Different style of African. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, I try to be funny when I mentioned the Cardinal official because that's one of the looks of a Jamaican. And then you got the other types, you know, all mixtures, Chinese, black types, uh, and they can come out different ways. Chinese, black, white types, East Indian, like the guy didn't even know special ed was a, a Jamaican, but yet he, he's talking like he knows it all. I'm not telling the man to shut up, but God damn it, stop acting like you know it when you don't know it. That's that's part of the uh, problem that black people have is they like to talk with, with strength and vigor. Like they know what they're talking about when they don't have a clue of what they're talking about. I mean, damn. Just, just, just learn something. You're going to tell us about people that you're not around, but we grew up with. Puerto Ricans. Dominican. Now, what I was going to say on the show was I remember Puerto Ricans used to have block parties uh, and I was a little kid walking around. I see that food and shit. You know how it is. You you know, <laughs> you want a free load. They would, you know, they'd be cool enough to say, hey, man, you, you know, help yourself, man. Get some. I'm like, OK, I'll take it. <laughs> so they were cool in that sense, but they would never. You got to watch the show. To see what we're talking about, we're talking about the creation of hip hop, and I was trying to let it be known that Puerto Ricans and other people taking my talking points and stuff, how they didn't really deal with us in the hood. They could live right across the street, right next door. They weren't listening to the hip hop. 
None of that. R&B, none of that shit. They were listening to their shit. Or country music. They act, even though they lived in the hood. You got some Puerto Ricans who act hood, do crime and all that kind of shit. Drugs, getting caught with drugs and, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. And some... And now in my early years, the, the Puerto Ricans, they didn't even, I didn't even see them dating black people. Uh, but now, that's a different story. Uh, but I did see, as a little kid, I did see Puerto Ricans with Afros. And when I would see them with, speaking Spanish, I'd say, damn. I said, what kind of people are them? Are they? Because you would see some with light brown hair but afros that's kinky you're like damn i look like a black man but my mother and sisters and all and they always used to call them spanish which i always hated in later years because i'm like they're not from spain they just speak spanish and then i would see a blonde hair straight hair puerto rican but with a tan and i'd be like damn you see all types but, you know, that's why I say the easiest way to describe Puerto Ricans is to say that they're mulattoes, mixing with mulattoes for the purposes of trying to get that black out. That's the whole purpose. I'm just thinking, looking for this two liter sugar free Dr. Pepper with the strawberries and cream. I, could, I can't find one for nothing. So I had to buy, spend seven dollars and some change. Matter of fact, it turned out to eight because they charged me the fucking... Uh, Deposit <laughs> about eight fifty for twelve cans of the soda. I said, "Damn it, I can't find any place else. So I'll, I'll, I'll get it. I, I I don't like. I prefer to buy two liters. It's more cost effective, but you know it is what it is. And you better believe I'm gonna save those goddamn cans now and take those motherfuckers back, just because I've been charged for this shit. Unless I could find a, uh somebody on the street." And if they'll take them, I'll give it to them. But, you know, these beggars are getting crazy. I don't know if I told you. I think I could have. I don't know. But I'll tell it again just in case uh, I didn't. I was at in Queens at around four, five in the morning. Right at the bridge. There was a light. This lady, black lady begging for money she's like i'm hungry i need something to eat she's i mean that's her style of begging not sir i'm hungry can you please get me something to eat now it's five in the morning i'm thinking to myself you know I, I, it's not my responsibility that's number one i'm like where the hell are you gonna get something to eat from any goddamn way what the fuck are you doing up walking out, uh, out and about at five in the morning to begin with so she's like i need something to eat First, I ignored her. Then I stopped. And then I, I had a bottle of water. So I said, let me give her a bottle of water. Since I'll be nice with that. Then she's like, I don't need no water. I need some food. <laughs> I'm like, God damn. So I just, I didn't even address her. I just hit the gas. So I said, God damn, these motherfuckers are something else. <laughs> I said, these motherfuckers want to discriminate. That's how you can tell they don't really need no... Uh, fucking food or whatever it is they're asking for. Fuck you gonna uh uh tell me gonna discriminate and shit. If you really hungry, a bottle of water. You don't want a bottle of water, a big bottle of water on top of that. And it was the kind of the alkaline water. That's the kind I'm not usually trying to give out. So I ain't argue with her. I just said, man, man let me get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I ain't about to negotiate with somebody begging me for some shit in, in, in a disrespectful way. Uh, so anyway, that was what I discussed on Red TV. And I knew being up there, I sent subliminal shots at Tariq Nashi because apparently people up there, Tariq Nashi stands. So, and of course I want to let it be known the delineation process came from me and it was all about Jamaicans, not Africans, because the African shit, that's a distraction. Because now, when it comes to pan-African shit, it comes to undermining 
Tariq Nasheed, I think I said it on there, Tariq Nasheed has changed it over to Africans and East Africans on top of that. And for as far as the Caribbean side of things, he changed it to Puerto Ricans and Hispanics. And I also let it be known on there that Puerto Ricans didn't used to call themselves Latinos. That's a relatively recent thing. That was a Mexican thing, Latino. Puerto Ricans started calling themselves, uh, and people like Fat Joe started calling themselves Latinos because that's a way, because remember, they used to say Boricua or Taino, which is a lie. That was their way of getting out of being black because they did, trust me, I grew up with these people. Everything they did was to try and get out of being black. They didn't want to call themselves black. Even my son's mother, who's a Puerto Rican, when I met her, I thought that she was a you know, regular black woman because she looked like salt from salt and pepper. She had some big titties too. So, met up with her again. I never really heard her speak Spanish after I got to know her a little more. <laughs> Except when she was talking on the phone. I was like, damn. So I said, oh, you know, you can call yourself black, right? She didn't answer. I said, damn. I said, these people, you, you have a baby with somebody and you still don't want to call yourself black. I said, God damn, what, what the fuck is wrong with these people? I said, well, I'm, I'm designating you black. I don't give a damn what you say. Because if you were something else, I wouldn't even fuck with you. <laughs> you you got to let them know this type of shit too. Uh, I do. So... With that being said, <clears throat> you know, they changed, Tariq Nashi changed the argument from African, from Jamaicans to Africans and from the Caribbeans to the Puerto Ricans when it's supposed to have been Jamaicans. And I think he's doing this shit on purpose because they're the imposters. They're the ones who impersonate. Now he's been having some Jamaicans call up and you see how slick they are and he can't even get with them because he's not used to fucking with them. And he doesn't know how dangerous they could be, too. <laughs> so he's not used to that shit. Got to get a little air in here. Starting to sweat. But he's not used to them. So he doesn't know how to handle these people. He just throws all of them in the same boxes as tethers. He doesn't know how sick they are. He doesn't know that they've been impersonating us. None of that shit. Um, but they're the main offenders. Red played a clip from Laz Alonzo, the Cuban guy. And whether or not... See, Cubans a little... They, they recognize their blackness a little more than uh, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. Uh... But again, growing up, like I said, I could have been around Cubans, but, you know, it just wasn't a popular thing to say that you were Cuban because of the, the history. Once I started driving, I noticed some people have Cuban flags in their car. So, <clears throat> but, I ne but again, I never heard anybody in school or wherever I was at say that they were Cuban. So, I guess they were ashamed of it because, you know, the politics. And the Cuban flag and the Puerto Rican flag, they look almost exactly alike. It's just that they got the colors reversed. Um, but the Jamaican, that's the main offender. That's why every time there's some discussion, the Jamaican is always on our case. Like a Louis Farrakhan or anybody. They always speak as if they are us. They're the main offender. And I threw that threw that British shit out there. That's bait too. Plus it's real. Threw the British shit out there. I want to see if these people are going to start talking about that. But I don't think they're going to go that far. Because they're not that deep. All they do is take people's talking points. And then they don't know how to defend the shit. When the people present shit to them. Because you listen to Tariq Nashi. When they start getting deep. My man starts avoiding or muting. Or hanging them up. 
He can't go too far. Anyway, let me get to the main point. This is getting hot. Uh, <laughs> the main point of today. Also, subscribe to the Rumble. This is going on Rumble first. I'm banned from making videos on YouTube. In case you didn't get the, the word. I had a premiere set. Like any other time, I'm thinking, okay. I'll set it, then I'll be ready to uh, put it up. To uh, get on there when it's going. Then I'm like, damn, I don't see the shit in the rotation. So then I check and I see I got a strike. And they're saying that it's hate speech. I'm like, man, what the fuck was hate speech about that? Besides saying that YouTube is full of shit. That's what, that's what the video was uh, titled. And I mentioned a Jew. How's that hate speech? Speaking of that, you see how Mexico has a, uh, you know, that's how most of the media and the uh, coons concentrated on the fact that they got a female president as opposed to a Jewish president without, she don't, she doesn't even have a, a Spanish name on top of that clear cut, a uh, Jew name. I'm like, man, how the fuck does that happen? You know how it is. They place in all their operatives in every country. That's why the wars has been going on recently. Israel, Ukraine, Russia, all their shit. A lot of mayors and governors around the country are small hats. In case you haven't noticed, European leaders, small hats. Sounds like they're uh, now I'm starting to see chief of police uh, as small hats now. You know, they ain't really mess with that blue collar shit. But damn sure it seems like they're putting all their people in place. Um. So anyway. If a Mexican. You ever get into a debate with a Mexican. Bring that shit up. Ask them why. They have a small hat president. In Mexico of all places. That's like having a uh, small hat president in Lebanon or somewhere you know that's how they do it anyway main topic of today is I guess you can call it the great white hype the replacement of black to white they're further replacing black Americans and everything I think some people are complicit some of these black Americans are complicit you got one thing that we were always superior in, without question, the sports entertainment. Now, what has happened? And you see how the white media, you got black coons who go on, have their media presence. They always bring up race, which I don't like bringing up because all that does is focus on us in a negative light. And making it, you know, every time we're mentioned, it's like, okay, it has to be negativity attached to it. So that's why I don't like fucking talking about race on every topic. And that's why I hate when these coons on uh, radio and TV do that. So. You got Caitlin Clark. You got Luka Doncic. You got the Joker. You got. Tyson Fury. Uh, am I missing somebody? I was supposed to have made notes of it. Christian McCaffrey. Uh, could be missing somebody. I can't think about it right now. Luckily, the girl who uh, <clears throat> just won the gymnastic shit again, so that's cool. Looking on YouTube in the comment section, you can see the code or hear the code when everybody and people, white people on radio, go way overboard. If you notice, Tyson Fury, the use check guy who beat him, Caitlin Clark. Luka Doncic and the Joker. You know what they all have in common? 
their stats. Immediately, they call them among the greatest of all time and the greatest of all time. I'm like, man, what the fuck did they do to be the greatest of all time? They're saying that with Doncic, he could be the greatest scorer of all time, if not the greatest, one of the top three, top five. I'm like, what? Now, my man can score. It should be easy to stop his ass because he only really got two or three moves. <laughs> I mean, if you notice, Kyrie Irving's been basically scoring what Luka's been scoring with a whole range, wide range of moves. That's why his highlights are better. Luka's highlights are just shooting and, and scoring with, with a James Harden type setback. It's effective. And I, I called it too. I said, you know, when he for his second season, I said, you know what? This guy is already in the Hall of Fame. I called that. <clears throat> but I ain't saying nothing about greatest of all time because that's impossible to be the greatest of all time if he's just a shooter, even, even if he can get his own shot because he doesn't do other things well. He doesn't really have a whole bunch of moves like that to be the greatest of all time. And you never know who might come in and start shutting that shit down. And if Boston wins, then that'll shut that shit down. Like Joker lost before when the Nuggets were still alive, they were calling him the greatest, possibly greatest of all time. And they said statistically he was the greatest of all time. <laughs> and he was the best player in the league. Then once he loses, now Luke is the best player in the league. That's why I hate when they keep saying who's the best in the, in the, in the world. Because the fucking chain, they don't even give it a whole fucking season. They don't even give it a month. Once you lose, oh, you ain't nothing now. <laughs> I mean, these, that's why it's nerve-wracking listening to these people on the fucking radio and TV. They act like kids. Oh, this man's the greatest, greatest of all time right now. So you got him. Then Caitlin Clark, again. Greatest college player, the Michael Jordan of the uh, WNBA. I'm like, man, stop it. She gets in the WNBA, she can't hang. Now people are like, well, Michael Jordan, he didn't win. Uh, well, when he came on the Blue Bulls, most of the team was, you know, already there and setting their way, so they had to incorporate him, but he was still doing his thing. So they want to compare their white hopes to our best. And they're trying to hype up the WNBA by any means necessary. Like I said, that shit don't work out in Canada. That shit ain't working out. Then you got Tyson Fury, who, you know, he's looking, he's looking corny, you know. But he's, he's effective. I give it to him. Uh... He loses to the Ukrainian guy. I didn't like what he said. Well, you know, his country's at war. So they wanted to give it to him. My man beat that ass fair and square. Even though Tyson Fury had a point, though. Because that's what I was thinking. Before this fight ended, I said they might find a way to give it to him just because he's from Ukraine. Even though his country may not exist after a while. <laughs> Shit. Uh, but... You know, my man was able to fight well, able to switch up his style when, when needed. And he could have knocked the man out, but they had to save Fury again. They saved his ass again. Then you got Deontay Wilder, Wilder losing to a Chinese guy. I mean, how often do you run into a Chinese man that's 6'6"? Six, six? I don't know what the fuck the excuse is for that, because the Chinese guy... Is three years older than Wilder. And I don't know why Wilder was complaining and then turning his back when you're a fucking experienced boxer. You know you don't complain to the ref and turn your back. Stupid. That's why sometimes, you know, boxing has the history of being fixed, but you still never convinced me that that Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson with skill. Mike Tyson threw that fight. I don't give a fuck what they say. Because at that time, Mike Tyson, you know, he just kept on knocking people out and around or two. 
And I'm sure his promoters and other people kept saying, man, come on, we got to make this shit last. You know, so if you can get, lose the title, then come back, that'll make uh, shit more exciting. That's why he lost it to a Buster Douglas instead of uh, somebody strong, you know, who can hold that belt. Because then Buster Douglas got his ass beat. And again, you could tell when the fix is on because Mike Tyson got knocked down by Buster Douglas and his first concern was getting his mouthpiece. Any boxer, any MMA fighter, the last thing they're concerned about is their mouthpiece. The first thing they're concerned about is getting up, clearing their mind so they can get up. And then the mouthpiece, you keep the mouthpiece on the ground because that'll buy you more time when they go get it. You don't pick the shit up, put it in your mouth, then try to stand up. That's somebody looking to get knocked the fuck out. <laughs> That's what that is. Come on. After all these years, I still can't believe that people still don't notice that shit. But it's getting hot in here. I might have to end this shit. God damn. It's crazy. It's cool outside, but once you. And then there's no sun. I'm in a garage. At least I was able to drink this alkaline water. So I'm in the fucking garage, but. <clears throat> Gotta clean the inside of this car. It's not dirty, but you know how it goes. Grab some new cleaner, some uh, turtle wax. I don't have the name of it, but it's something. It looks like an all purpose cleaner or some shit. You can spray it on anything. It's supposed to have enzymes in it, which combats, uh, I guess, biological shit and makes the car smell well while keeping it protected, too, at the same time. Different concoction. They say you can spray it on glass, but, you know, I, I don't trust that on that. <clears throat> but then again, on the interior glass, after that windshield fogs up a little bit, because, you know, that's bacteria, like I'm talking in here now, if that shit starts fogging up, that's bacteria that gets on the glass, so that's where the enzymes are coming to play. And keep breaking that shit down. But anyway, that's what they're doing these days. Hyping up white fighters, because that's what they've been looking for for the longest time since the Jack Johnson days. Getting white fighters to beat us. White players to beat us. That's why they didn't let us in the football, baseball, uh, and even basketball, where some people say that's what we were born to do. Born to play basketball. If we were born to play it, they didn't want us to play. Because they knew once we come in, we take it over. Plus, they didn't want us making that money. That's why they make a big deal out of a Christian McCaffrey being a running back and a white guy. And any white corners in the league. But then when it comes to black quarterbacks, they shit on the black quarterbacks all the time because they don't want us taking over that position. Even though they've been trying to hype up some black quarterbacks while shitting on others like Russell Wilson. They're now talking about Russell Wilson might get his job taken by Justin Fields. <clears throat> I don't know how that's possible, but anything to discredit people. Us, that is. So, uh, they bring out anybody. They got to go international, just like with singing. They always got to get some British people and say, yeah, this person uh, can sing as good. They got soul. They can sing as good or better than black people. I'm like, now, there are a few, they all got to be British, though, that can sing, that can hang with some black people. I can't think anybody is better, though. Now, you got Steve Perry of Journey. I think he can he can get with a lot of people. Now, today, so-called singers, he can, he can destroy all of them. Because <laughs> that's the thing, they... they Taking out the R&B. I was on another line. What, what show was that one? Yeah, I forgot what show that was. Oh, that was the Bro Sanchez. Talking about music. Now, of course, there was another couple of guys hogging the mic. 
was trying not to argue with him to say, hey, man, can you please shut the fuck up so I can uh, get my shit in? But we were talking about people getting beat and all that kind of stuff in the game. I was just watching an interview with Daryl Hall. They say it was from five years ago. He was talking about he had to keep torn because, you know, they got jerked in their record deals. And Oates is trying to sell off half of their whole image like these other artists are doing. He's trying to cash out. I guess Daryl Hall doesn't want to do that because he knows he is better to keep the shit together. Pass that shit down to your people. That's why they're offering a lot of artists $200 million, $250 million to sell out. Because <clears throat> once you, that's the final deal for an artist. They, they, they buy your whole career, your whole image, your whole name, everything associated with everything you ever did. I don't even know if you can even tour on your own after that. So they take your songs, your publishing, your name, your image, your likeness, every damn thing. Because the music biz is dead. So they figure, you know what? To save what we got, and hopefully in the future, you know, there will be a turnaround. We got to stop paying these artists royalties. Whether songs get licensed or what have you. <clears throat> for commercials or what have you, movies. If we can get that and have all the revenue coming back to us, then we got some type of business left. But if we still got to pay these people out, you know, it's going to be rough. So that's why they come up with that, depending on the artists and their success, $250 million, Bob Dylan, Paul Simon, they did that kind of shit. You do that, you're basically giving up Your whole professional life. Your whole career that you built up. Now if you're starving for cash. You'll take it. Or if you're tired of. Uh, waiting on checks here and there. You'll take it. It was better. To invest in your future of your family. Because that money will run out. Like I said before, you already know yourself. The cost of living already doubled. You know, like these two liter sodas at the store. Fucking two, three dollars. I'm like, man, I ain't paying that. So I only buy the shit if it's on sale. And the only reason I paid for these sodas is because I couldn't find the zero sugar in that Dr. Pepper flavor. So I said, in any other way, so I took it. But, um... That's what's going on in the biz. So he got beat. Daryl Hall got beat out of his money. The music biz is dead. They suppressed the R&B because, as I was explaining to them, anybody can rap. Now, there are different degrees on how well or how bad you can rap, <laughs> but anybody can rap. But when it comes to singing like Sam Cooke, Al Green, and all this type of shit, not anybody could do that kind of shit. Patty LaBelle's, all these kind of people in the black soul. There's none of that. That's why they have rappers be so-called singers with the auto-tune. And then if there is an actual singer, you know, they're all fucking weak. You know, it's like uh, they're so weak that if you tried to sing and you can't sing and you're next to them, you'll feel, you know what, I could do enough to, to get with them. But if you had a Teddy Pendergrass or even an R. Kelly, hell, even a Mary J. Blige, and they're singing next to you, you'll say to yourself, oh, yeah, I can't do that. So they get these people out of the way. And I see that Mary J. Blige is in a TV show or some shit, too. So that's what they do. They give them acting jobs, give them money some other way, and uh, move them out of the way. Because they don't want them doing the R&B thing. And these people are dumb enough to take the money and run. They've effectively killed off their lane. And WBLS in New York, traditionally a black station, black-owned station, even though I think the owner was 
you know, white looking, but he was black, just like that TV one lady. Uh, so I got the word that they finally uh, sold the fuck out. Forgot how much they paid. I think I talked about this on another one. I think it. I think they got paid fifty million. Now anybody who's familiar with radio knows that once you give up uh, your frequency and top in a top market like New York, you ain't getting that shit back. No matter what people tell you about uh, radio not being anything anymore, you're not getting that shit back. See, there are people out here, they got the money to give you, and then you'll say to yourself, damn, I'm coming off. Or I better sell now, because, you know, the shit ain't looking good. But see, once they consolidate, then they can bring shit back. It's just, just like when Sam Cook or anybody else, they sell their, uh, well, his wife sold it, his widow sold his uh, music. Just like Bruce Lee's widow sold his rights as soon as he died. I think because she knew there was some funny business. She didn't want to get caught up in that shit. That's the funny part when you got weak wives like that. She didn't want to fight. You know, they got kids. They don't want to do all that kind of shit. But um, once you sell out, you're out of the game. I mean, that's the whole point of the music biz. It, it, uh, it's run by small hats. <clears throat> Is to get your talents out, exploit you, get you some money in your pocket, get you used to fine living. Because most of the musicians, it's just like fighters. Most of the people, almost all fighters come from the underclass. And they fight, want to kill each other because they can get paid. Where else are you going to get all that kind of money from? That's better than crime. But of course, it's criminals running the shit. So, it gets you used to limousines, uh, homes, luxury cars. You know, after a while, you know, you, you go from taking the bus, taking the train, to driving no less than a Mercedes, to after a while, if you can get the Bentley, Rolls Royce, jet planes, you're used to that shit. Then you're like, I don't want no less than that now. I'll never be seen in the Mercedes. It, it, it can't be nothing less than a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini or some shit like that. Get you used to that shit. The high uh, cost living. Eating in Beverly Hills and all that kind of shit. High class restaurants. Get you used to that food. And then when your money starts uh, falling off. Especially if they get you on drugs. That's the other trend. You're used to the food. You're not going to be fucking with McDonald's anymore. They used to high class knife and uh, fork uh, food. Now your money's falling off. And you can't be like somebody like me who says, well, I don't really need the Bentley. You know, what's wrong with a, a, a S class? <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with the E class for that matter? Now, if you you gotta go C, and you're you're a man, don't go C class. <laughs> that, that C class, that's not for a man. But um, <laughs> but that's how they do. It's like man, mother, fuck that. And then once your money starts running out, you know what? There's a way we can get you some money in your pocket. What we could do. Is you can sell us your publishing. <laughs> and if they're on drugs, they're going to eventually do it. That's why they always get you the drugs. I've been reading these books, Motown, and these others like Martha Vandella. You know, if she got on drugs. I mean, you again, you don't even have to, if you're perceptive enough, you, you and you know the deal. You don't have to wait for somebody to say that they're a drug addict. You can just look at their eyes and... The other, the gums and other uh, signs. And you can see that with Martha Reeves. So she says she got, went to a party. She wanted to be down with the program. So she started using drugs. And then she struggled financially too after a while in the 70s and 80s and shit. 
And her money didn't come back up until they did that Motown reunion shit. Because she was struggling. And of course, when you're on drugs and struggling, and she was getting beat by some guy that she was seeing. <laughs> it's crazy. But when you're on drugs and struggling, that money is, is, is rough. So, and she was forced to then she had a had to downgrade on the card and she had to sell her car and all that kind of shit. Crazy. But that that shit happens. And especially when you're on drugs. Because once you're on drugs and your money goes, what can you do? But I'm sure there was more going on than she revealed in that book, but you know, everybody ain't gonna tell every goddamn thing. <laughs> now that's that's where the other books come into play where people <clears throat> wanna tell the other side from interviewing other people. That's why you want to see the whole story or a better picture. That's when you got to get all books. <laughs> the uh, unauthorized biographies. I'm going to track some of those shits down. But that's what they do with the entertainers. That's the track record. Get you hooked on the drugs. Because that's the music biz. What you made is theirs. Because they put up the money. You didn't put up any money. Feeling like I s sound like I hear a bug or something. <laughs> but you didn't put up the money. You were broke. They gave you the lifestyle that you can only see on TV or in the movies. Now it's the reality. Now they got to keep up a facade of making it appear as if all these people are billionaires all of a sudden. When there's nothing like I was explaining on Bro Sanchez's show. There is no music biz. There's nothing. All you have is streaming and streaming companies keep going down. There's nothing to measure success these days, especially financial success. That's why I was looking at a Rolling Stones because they were at UBS Arena. So I said, let me look at and see how much they're charging for tickets. Just, just, to, just to see. I said, damn, these motherfuckers are still torn. Fucking 80 years old and still torn. I think the cheapest ticket was like $168 or some shit like that. I said, damn. Now, if a record label gets none of that, then I guess that's good money. They got the uh, cachet to do that kind of thing. You know, people know that they're about their time is almost up. Mick Jagger still got a lot of energy. Energy. I saw somebody who had recorded part of a uh, Rolling Stones concert that took place. I think it was this year. So that motherfucker still got a lot of energy. <laughs> Shit is crazy. But, um, it's the way the shit is, man. They're trying to replace us in sports. They're trying to replace us in entertainment. That's why this Eminem shit has been making a comeback. Who gives a fuck about Eminem? He looks stupid. This fucking, uh, he looks like an old white man, really. That's what he is. Uh, with his beard that's obviously dyed. I don't even know why he even tries to even fuck with that kind of beard. They try to bring him back into the uh, spotlight. But he's an old man. See, that's the thing about white people. They age so badly that when you're a rapper, you just can't be 50, 60 years old and still try to look cool. If he ever did look cool. Because he's too old looking. So, you know, it is what it is on that. But the athletes, for the first time in a while, I'm rooting for Boston to win. But I was actually rooting for Boston even before uh, the Mavericks got in because they're really the East's only chance of winning the title, really. Uh, I was expecting it to be uh, Mavericks and Nuggets, which I thought. See, if Dallas had to battle the Nuggets, I think that would have been 
I'm not sure that Dallas would have won. To be honest with you. So the Nuggets, they don't really have to tweak too much uh, for next season. But Boston, uh, you know, if they do win with relative ease and, you know, that'll keep up with my conspiracy theory that the Celtics have the most titles now because the Basketball Hall of Fame is in Springfield, Massachusetts, and that's where they claim that uh, modern basketball was created in Springfield, Massachusetts. So I said, well, yeah, what a coincidence that the Celtics had the most titles for the longest time until LeBron James won that title recently for the Lakers. So this will put them back on top. But, damn, I was looking at the stats. I said, damn, the Lakers have been the 32 finals. Only won 17 titles, but that's still a fucking lot. That's between Minneapolis and Los Angeles. So they were successful in Minneapolis, too. I mean, that they're clearly the most successful franchise of them all. That's a lot to drop, though, in titles. And I think the Celtics went, was it 23 times? So the Celtics got a better win-to-loss ratio than the Lakers do. So, but the Lakers are clearly more popular than the Celtics. But um, that's what they're trying to do. All this discussion of Caitlin Clark and anybody who hates on them. They hate on her. They hate on Luka. They hate on Joker because they're mad because the best player is not black. But how many times has the best player been white? They always overhype them. You know, the best player being white is usually a one-time deal, once in a generation like a Larry Bird or somebody like that. And he wasn't even the best in his era, but they always tie him to Magic Johnson. And Magic Johnson is a dummy for going along with that shit. I'm not even going to say Magic John. I think Magic Johnson was a more effective and overall better player than Larry Bird. Not to say that Larry Bird was corny because Larry Bird was definitely a bad dude. And you played a video game, you know, he was definitely bad. But you look at Magic Johnson. He had basically, what, a 10, 11, some people might say 12 year career. Before the... Uh, Diagnosis. <laughs> I think he went to the finals like ten times, nine, nine or ten times. Won five, nine times. I think he and he won five titles. That's a hell of a uh, win, uh, an accomplishment. That's, see, people blame. They say, "Oh, LeBron James is uh, weak because he lost six finals, and he's been to ten. Well, shit, Magic Johnson's been to nine. One five. But what LeBron James did is still spectacular because, again, the man went from Cleveland to Miami and ends up in four straight finals. Then the man leaves Miami, goes to Cleveland. The next season, now he's in four straight finals. Again, after he switched teams. And Cleveland fell off. I mean, Miami fell off. Then he leaves Cleveland. Cleveland fell off. And he goes to the Lakers. Now, his impact wasn't the same because they didn't end up in finals like that. But the West is too stacked. Now, he should. If I were him, I, I, they say he can't get that much money if he went to another team. But he'd be better off in the East. But <laughs> going back to Cleveland close out his career but eight straight finals while switching teams who the fuck has done that I think the Boston Celtics of the 60s went to eight straight and won eight straight that's where the bulk of their titles come from I mean come on come on so, matter of fact, since we're on Celtics, let me talk about them in this way. Throughout the Celtics history, 
And really up until the Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, uh, maybe you can even go right, just say the Paul Pierce era. <clears throat> With Antoine Walker. Technically, not even technically, realistically, <laughs> the Celtics in Boston, you know, Boston's racist city filled with Irish people who always claim want to play the victim role these days, but they're racist. They just couldn't wait to join in with the white man and be a full fledged white uh, member. And that seems to mean, mean hating on black people. <laughs> so. What they did, Celtics always had a white team. That's what they always had, a white team, mostly white team. Even the Larry Bird days, you had that Dennis Johnson. You know, he had red hair and freckles. So I said, that's why they let his ass on there. <laughs> so that's the way they wanted to keep it. You got to have an Irish, even with the Patriots. You got to have a Tom Brady being Irish. <laughs> And it wasn't until Paul Pierce era that most of the Celtics teams ended up being black. Just like now. Because they realized, fuck it, we can't keep competing trying to keep it all white. So fuck that. We might as well switch this shit up. But they, in sports, if they prefer a white person, that's what they prefer to have. Just like in baseball or whatever the fuck. They prefer white. It's just that we happen to be the best. So they got to roll with us. Small hats, they're not doing us any favors. So they think they're doing us something, some type of favor because they're supplying us with money that we wouldn't have otherwise. Well, they're supplying them with money that we they wouldn't have otherwise, which is true. But if they didn't have the skill, they wouldn't be fucking with them. They wouldn't be giving them money otherwise, all that money. Then, see, it's like they hate the fact that we dominate. But then they ask the question, how come there aren't a lot of black Americans in baseball? We need some. Well, you drove us all out. You, for some odd reason, want to go with these uh, Hispanics and put money in their pocket and give them unlimited cash flow. So now you got, uh, I forgot my man's name now. Rodriguez uh, buying help buying the uh, Timberwolves. He wouldn't have had all that money. It's just that uh, uh, baseball has unlimited uh, salary. They don't have any salary caps. So he can get a lot of money. And they don't call him the first Latino or the first black man on in the NBA team. I don't even know if they sealed the deal yet because I know the owner was trying to get out of that shit after the success that they had. <laughs> but, um... All of them went to baseball. That's why people don't watch baseball because these is a Puerto, uh, Hispanic affair. And some black people are stupid saying that there are no black people in, ML, in the MLB when there are a whole lot of black people in the MLB. They just speak Spanish. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. But um, that's what they do. But they keep they're begging for us to get in. Baseball, for some reason, it's an easy game to play once you know how to play it. But yet, it's the hardest game to get in out of all the major sports. Because they like sending people down into the uh, minor leagues to get your weight up. It's crazy. They'll demote you quicker than any other league out there. <laughs> Matter of fact, I was just looking up to Sean Jackson because I was like, damn, what, what the fuck happened to him? Because I said he had a chance to get into the Hall of Fame, but I think he fucked up by going to um, the Redskins because he wanted to, you know, get revenge on Philly. He should have gone to a team where they can pass him the ball. That's your wide receiver. Go to a team with the quarterback that could toss that shit up. He fucked up. Now, he was with the Rams. He wasn't getting utilized as much as he wanted to get utilized. And then they end up winning the Super Bowl after they let he asked them to uh, get released. But they still gave him a ring, though, because he still played. 
But um, it, that reminded me of Tiki Barber when he left the Giants. <laughs> they retired and then they win the shit. Sometimes you got to have patience, man. But I looked up his stats. No Hall of Fame for Deshaun Jackson, but he did retire last season. Kept on getting hurt. He was a weapon for a while, but picked the wrong teams, man. It's like Adrian Peterson picked the wrong teams when he went to uh, uh, Louisiana, uh, <laughs> New Orleans. He shouldn't have done that shit because they didn't need him. You had to go someplace where you were needed. You think it would be that simple, but you know. The other before I let this go, uh, damn, I can't believe it's an hour and five minutes. It's hot as a motherfucker in here. The NHL. See, they know they need black people to make something pop. That's why they got a black guy on the NHL, and they keep uh putting them out there as much as possible. They got him, uh. What do you call it? Uh, uh, doing the commentary. And. Um, you know, it's to attract black people. That's all it's about. So. They want to hype up the white shit and white people. You go on YouTube, you see the comments. When they say, oh, this person, Luca, whatever white athlete is the best in the world. People are just jealous, which is cold for niggas are jealous. Because who else would be jealous? But white people overhype shit. That's what they always look for. Uh, somebody to be able to be as good or better than a black person. That's what they look for. When that person's not there, that's when they want to be a fan of the black person. That's why they're trying to say that Luka is better than LeBron James, is he? No, he's not. Even this current LeBron James, he's still not better than him. But they'll say he is. When James Harden was doing his thing like Luca, they weren't really calling him the best in the world, but that's how they do it. Anyway, it's getting hot as a motherfucker. Well, it already is. Uh, I'm wondering if this is a camera looking at me, too. I got to check that shit out. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So uh, they, they want their great white height. It'll be temporary. I think Luke is going to the Hall of Fame. Joker, I think he already punched his ticket because of the, the stats and shit. So he, he has to go into the Hall of Fame. Now, as far as Hall of Fame, I'm not even denying that for, for these guys. But when they talk in top three or better than Hakeem, saying he's the most skilled big man ever, he got skills, even though it's kind of slow motion skills. But still, the best skilled big man ever is Hakeem. And until, until I see something otherwise, that, that ain't changing for me. So with that, I'm out.